this is day five. We've had no wind, crazy, ridiculous wind, mostly dealing with big rollers, spray splashing across the bow. Beautiful sailing day, wow. Most of the downwind sailing we had done over the prior three days was done with just the foresail out. Today I experimented with just the mainsail up. The boat did well with this configuration and was easy to manage, but jibing was more complicated and the stronger winds put a lot of strain on the rig. My preference going forward for downwind sailing in strong winds is foresail only. So we've crossed from Deltaville to the eastern shore, that's Tangier Island over there. Tangier Island is part of a chain of very low islands in the southern Chesapeake that are gradually disappearing due to erosion, subsidence, and sea level rise. The northernmost island, Bloodworth Island, was used as a naval bombing range for many years. It is off limits because of unexploded ordnance. The other islands are rich in Chesapeake waterman history and still a source of crab and oysters. 67% of Tangier Island's landmass has disappeared since 1850, and it is projected that the island will be uninhabitable within 20 years. Currently, the highest point on Tangier Island is only four feet above sea level. The next island north of Tangier Island is Smith Island, about 15 miles away. The water between Tangier Island and Smith Island is only one to two feet deep. You can get into Tangier Sound by coming around the southern edge of Tangier Island, or you can go north for 15 miles and get in through Kedges Strait on the north side of Smith Island. You are the captain. It is 1 p.m. and you've just arrived at Tangier Island. The NOAA HRRR weather model predicts 30 knots of wind from the west starting at 6 p.m. and lasting for one hour. The other four models predict winds of 15 to 20 knots for the next 12 hours. There are no thunderstorms in the forecast. You would A, get into Tangier Sound so you have the option of anchoring at Cedar Island or Little Anamexix River. B, sail 14 miles west to Ingram Bay, or C, just continue 15 miles north to Kedges Strait, where you can get behind Smith Island if you need to. We picked option C. We even picked out a spot on the map where we could drop an anchor if we needed to. Very pleasant downwind sail. Winds from the south. Southwest, upper teens was predicted, it's probably about right, makes a little bit of a swell. Coming, <laughs> coming into Smith Island. Smith Island is known for the Old English relic accent of its inhabitants. The violent oyster wars it fought with Tangier Island in the 1940s, and the 8 to 10 layer Smith Island cake. Smith Island barely rises above the surface of the water and is likely to disappear completely in the next generation. There is a narrow channel through the island with a harbor in the center that has room to tie up three to four boats. I have heard there is a payment box there where the daily rates are posted. Patrons are on the honor system to pay. We arrived at Smith Island at about 4 p.m. At that time, the NOAA HRRR weather model was still predicting 30 knots of wind at 6 p.m., lasting for about an hour. What was new, though, were thunderstorms moving from west to east, both north of us and south of us. You are the captain. You would A, try to travel 20 miles west to a protected anchorage on the western side of the Chesapeake, 
B, try to navigate the narrow channel into the center of the island to tie up at Yule Harbor, or C, get around to the backside of the island for protection from westerly winds. It's possible that we would have been able to get to the center of the island to tie up at Yule Harbor, in which case that would have been a terrific option. However, these rarely used channels have a habit of silting up and becoming impassable. We ran aground a few years ago trying to navigate a similar channel into a Tillman Island marina. We decided not to risk getting stuck halfway in and opted to head to the back of the island instead. When we got around to the back of the island, I was disappointed to see how little protection it afforded. And I was also unhappy with how far away from the land we would have to anchor. But as the experienced commentators on the storm video pointed out, waves kill boats, not wind. Oh, and running into a lee shore kills them too. We probably would have been fine just getting the anchor out and enduring an uncomfortable but comparatively safe night. Instead, I made the decision to head for better protection on the eastern shore. We're heading a little bit, we're mostly east, a little bit north. Hopefully not. I just looked at the radar again, it looked okay. We should find a lot of protection as we get closer to the land. Yeah, I, I think I think we're heading away from the edge of the store, but not very fast. Yeah, and you're, you're right, it'd be stupid to go back to Smith Island and go through that little channel. That'd be nuts. We're just going to sail up the eastern shore, right? Um, the wind's right behind us at the moment, and that's kind of good. We'll have to turn into the wind to anchor. Maybe I should slow down and let this pass a little bit. Okay. Yeah, this says it should be about 10. This chart shows the depth in feet. You can see the moment when we decided to abandon Smith Island and head east. Early on, I am heading east into deeper water. Later though, as we get into the big Anamesix River, expert commenters force me to rethink the wisdom of running towards a lee shore in strong winds. Get your life jacket on, Bob. Expert commentators pointed out that putting a bit of foresail out would keep the boat moving forward, reducing the risk of broaching. Red buoy. Yeah, that that was 
just phenomenally <laughs> that was um, we were going five knots with no engine wow. and just the, the, the wind pushing against my back you know pushing us from behind Yeah, <laughs> we need a hot shower now. And I'm just going four knots. I'm hoping to reach a place where we can put the anchor down, but the wind has to slow down a bunch before we do that. have been doing this I didn't finish the thought but I was thinking about having to come forward and rig the anchor when the conditions were rough I don't think I could have done it lesson learned rig a jack line for any multi-day sale Ready to just throw over. Yeah, we're just going to go to the end here and then we're out of water, so it'll be seven feet. What, what are the, I, I'm gonna get I'm gonna throw the anchor, I think. I got it. just let the wind push us for a second and then I'll, I'll go back we got plenty of swing room it was scary it was terrifying I'm gonna um, just check, make sure it's good and taut. <clears throat> it seems like a really good hold. I was going to splice together. Yeah, I was going to make a video of, you know, from leaving Deltaville to getting the anchor down. I, was, I forgot to turn it on for throwing the anchor out, but um, here I can have a, a video of. Stacy made her famous beef bourbon We distractedly ate dinner and watched city slickers while the wind howled outside. I set an anchor alarm on the iPad. Soon after dinner it sounded, 
indicating that we were driving. I went up on deck and released another 35 feet of anchor line, giving us a 14 to 1 scope. I also attached a 20 pound mushroom anchor, a technique I learned about from this good old boat article. Stacy went to bed in the v berth and slept like a baby all night. I stayed up on anchor watch. With each wind gust, the boat would shudder, anchor line would make creaking and popping noises, but we did not drag again. The winds finally died down a bit after 2 a.m. In the morning, after repairing the mainsail, we were off on another adventure. But that's a story for another day. <laughs> <laughs>